Elon Musk has revealed the new rocket that will fly from the Earth and reach Mars. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Over the past few decades, humanity has done a lot in exploring the world outside our planet. Man has stepped on the moon, studied space, made new inferences, and revealed a lot more about the universe than humanity ever knew before. However, when it comes to actually traveling to other planets, all that has ever been sent is robots. While those highly sophisticated robots or rovers such as the Perseverance tell the world everything there is to know about Mars, one thing has always fallen short. No person has ever stepped foot on the red planet, but that changes, all with Elon Musk's new rocket, Starship. With Starship, Elon Musk has essentially developed a rocket that might be a game changer for space travel. Starship, as it's known, will be a totally reusable transport system capable of taking up to 100 people to the Red Planet. The founding goal of Musk's private spaceflight enterprise, SpaceX, was to make life multi-planetary. This is partially motivated by existential risks, such as an asteroid impact big enough to wipe out civilization. Settling other planets would deposit some of the eggs in different baskets, saving human civilization if one of them were to face a calamity. In 2016, the entrepreneur revealed his reasons at an international conference in Mexico by saying, The alternative is to become a spacefaring civilization and a multi-planet species, which I hope you would agree is the right way to go. Musk has reportedly spoken about his idea of constructing communities on Mars. He argues that settlements would need vast numbers of people in order to become self-sustaining. Realizing this desire demands a vehicle that's adequate for this challenge. Starship is essentially a rocket and spaceship combo that might transport more than 100 people at a time to the Red Planet. The system is planned to be totally reusable, meaning the major hardware pieces are not thrown in the water or allowed to burn up, as happens with some other launch systems, but are instead retrieved from orbit. They may then be renovated and flown again, decreasing the cost of the whole business. It can be interesting to have a look at some specifications of a vehicle as sophisticated as the Starship. How different is it from conventional spaceships and what kind of modern technology is it equipped with to handle such elaborate missions? Let's have a deeper look. At launch, the spaceship named Starship will sit on top of a rocket called Super Heavy. The entire system will stand 120 meters tall and is also referred to as Starship. Let's have a look at the spaceship first. With its nose cone and landing fins, it's safe to say that the stainless steel vehicle evokes the rocket ships from the golden era of science fiction. At the rear of the 50-meter-long vehicle are the six extremely efficient Raptor engines, built over the course of a decade by SpaceX. It is during this time that the company was able to perfect that technology for optimal results. The combustion takes occur in phases, and the engine's design lowers the quantity of fuel that's squandered. The choice of fuel is rare for rocket engines, yet methane can provide lots of thrusts. It's also a wise decision in view of Musk's designs for Mars. The SpaceX creator argues that CH4 may be synthesized from Martian subterranean water and from atmospheric carbon dioxide, CO2, utilizing a chemical process known as the Sabatier reaction. Refueling Starship for the return voyage to Earth using Martian resources would impart a measure of self-sufficiency, making missions much more practically feasible as well as cost-effective. Towards the face of the spacecraft, which is sometimes referred to as the upper stage, is a massive payload compartment that will have the ability to haul large cargo or people to destinations within deep space. Remember that Starship is powered by Raptor engines, which essentially burn methane as fuel. Coming back to the rocket, it measures 70 meters in length, which is around 230 feet. Super Heavy will be filled with 3,400 tons of cryogenic methalox. In other words, that is about 3.4 million kilograms of chilled methalox. The spaceship will be powered by around 32 Raptor engines, which is a specification that has changed several times by now and should achieve more than 70 meganewtons of maximum thrust. The figure comes down to about 16 million pounds in thrust. This power should be able to lift at least 100 tons of payload and possibly as high as 150 tons to destinations that are in the low orbit area of our planet. Interestingly enough, SpaceX has also been designing a version of Starship for NASA's coordinated flights to the moon. After the two organizations entered a contract earlier this year, it is decided that the Starship will be used for long-haul trips to Mars and back. It must be remembered that the sheer distance between Mars and Earth means that this journey could very well take up to nine months each way. 
Musk is even looking to install about 40 cabins in the payload area, which is essentially the front of the upper stage. You could conceivably have five or six people per cabin if you really wanted to crowd people in, but I think mostly we would expect to see two or three people per cabin, and so nominally about 100 people per flight to Mars, Musk discussed. Starship will also play a major role in NASA's Artemis mission, which basically intends to create a long-term human presence on the moon. In April 2021, the US Space Agency granted SpaceX a $2.89 billion contract to develop Starship into a lander capable of sending people to the moon within this very decade. Musk envisages Starship being utilized for voyages to the largest solar system. However, this is a longer term aim. The version suited for Artemis flights would not contain the heat shield or flaps that are essential for a return route to Earth. Instead, the Starship human landing system would remain in space after its initial launch from Earth, to be utilized for a number of flights between lunar orbit and the Moon's surface. The uncrewed or cargo version of Starship features a payload bay that opens up like the mouth of a crocodile. This would allow it to be used for launching satellites. SpaceX says the huge payload capacity opens up possibilities for new types of robotic science missions, including telescopes larger than the James Webb Observatory, which is the forthcoming successor to Hubble. This system could also be used for space tourism and even for high-speed journeys between different destinations on Earth. Musk says that Starship could eventually carry people to destinations in the greater solar system, including gas giants such as Jupiter. But this remains a long-term objective. As far as the landings are concerned, the rocket is supposed to belly flop back to Earth before firing its engines to flip itself into a vertical position. And this is certainly something out of the usual. The vehicle, therefore, ends up using four steel landing flaps that are positioned close to the front and rear of the vehicle so that they can control its descent. In many ways, this is much like a skydiver using their arms and legs to get in control of a freefall. It's quite different from anything else. We're doing a controlled fall, Elon Musk said during a Starship update in 2019. You're trying to create drag rather than lift. It's really the opposite of an aircraft. As Starship approaches the ground, it should be slow enough to execute an engine burn that flips the vehicle into a vertical position. It then uses the Raptors as retro rockets to guide the vehicle down to a safe landing. Musk says this general approach could be used to bring Starship down safely on any planetary surface in the solar system. At a time like this, one important question that often comes up is, when will it fly? Musk has said that he will launch one of the spacecraft on an uncrewed journey to Mars in 2024. Even though the SpaceX founder's timeframes have appeared unrealistic at times, he has also earned a reputation for finally completing his goals, no matter how ambitious. Is interplanet travel something you see happening during your lifetime? Let us know what you think about the entire project. Thanks for watching and have a great day.